Hello everybody and thank you for joining me in this new video from ECG exercises. I hope you will enjoy this video and join me here in my future video presentations. If you are new to my channel, please do not for, uh, forget to subscribe and I would be happy if you share my videos in your social medias. Now let's go together to the ECG exercise number 26. So our patient is an 82 year old woman uh, with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, hypertensive heart disease, and coronary artery disease, who was admitted to the hospital because of uh, exacerbating heart failure. Ejection fraction was normal in echocardiography, 66%. I, we, I would like to just talk with you about the findings in the resting ECG. Now let's go together and look at the ECG. When we look at the ECG, we see that the, P, the PR interval is prolonged. When we look closer to the P wave morphology, especially in the lead two, three, and AVF, we see that the second part of the P wave, which shows the left atrial activation, is negative, and AVR and AVL is positive. You can see here the AVR and AVL is positive. Usually the interatrial conduction happens through Bachmann bundle, so the left atrial activation is from superior to inferior, and therefore the left atrial component of the P wave would be also negative, uh, positive. Uh, but in this case, the 2-3 AVF, the left atrial component of the P wave is negative, which uh, typical ECG finding in Bachmann bundle block. When we look at our ECG, here is the lead one and also AVF. Here is the lead three and here, uh, actually here is the CS osteum. So that's the reason why the lead three is the most negative one almost and the AVL is the most positive one. So this is the finding most compatible with Bachmann bundle block. Let's go together to the next um, ECG. Here, also, when we look at the precordial leads, especially V3, V4, V5, and V6, these the left uh, the left atrial component of the P wave is also negative, which is also compatible with interatrial conduction through coronary sinus. So now the next question is we have prolonged PR interval and also in interatrial septum, we have some conduction block through Bachmann bundle. So when we look at the echocardiography uh, leads, uh, echocardiographic images, we can also see some changes in the interatrial septum, uh, interventricular septum, sorry. And um, the next question was, um, what would be our next diagnostic step? So having in mind these echocardiographic images, Bachmann bundle block, and also prolonged PR interval, I would say that the next diagnostic step would be a cardiac MRI to visualize uh, possible scar in this area, or also um, exclude diagnosis like uh, sarcoidosis and also amyloidosis and all the infiltrative uh, cardiomyopathies. At the end, I hope you enjoyed this short video presentation regarding ECG findings in ECG in patients with Bachmann bundle block. And I would like to invite you joining me here in my future video presentations. Once again, thank you for your attention. Bye.